All right, greetings everyone out there in YouTube land. Welcome to another video. Today's video brings me over in the Douglasville area of Berks County, just outside of Pottstown. And I'm ex gonna explore a little village here with some history to it called the Molatin Village or More Latin, however you wanna say it there. I'll show you the different spellings of it here in a minute. But this is a little village that goes back to the 1700s. Um, it was a Swedish village, and it was more or less like the gateway to Berks County with uh, commerce as far as um, um, agriculture and ore from local furnaces and mines and, and whatnot. So we're going to check this out. There's some interesting houses here. I've been wanting to check this out for a while now. Um, I've seen other YouTube videos done on this, but I decided to come over here and check it out for myself. Uh, might also check out the uh, Thun section, another section of the Thun Trail of the uh, Schuylkill River Trail. That might be a separate video depending on how long this video is. But anyway, so come on along with me and let's check out this little village. So this is the sign here and the parking area and this is actually old Philadelphia pike right here that leads you into the village but at the parking area gives you a little bit of the history of it and some might say it's more latin but according to this here its uh, original spelling was mo latin so um, it was uh, a swedish colony here or a swedish village that uh, william penn granted uh, it was 10,000 acres to 17 colonists of Swedish descent. So there's some houses here that we're going to check out and there's one right behind me and there's one up the street here but I don't know how close we're going to be able to get to it um, because we're doing some renovations on it. But this is where we're at right here and the first house we're going to check out is the White Horse Inn and then this would be George Douglas House, which is probably how Douglasville got its name. And there's also a little store there. And then we're going to follow one of these trails down and check out these other two houses down here and see if we can find the remains of a covered bridge that uh, used to be here back in the day. And any information that I'm forgetting to um, talk about here, I'll put at the bottom of the screen. All right, so this is the first building on the stop here. And this is the White Horse Inn. And it looks like established in 1762, though this village was started in 1701. So I'm sure this was some kind of uh, inn for travelers to uh, spend the night. There's a uh, information board over here. And this whole area over here is uh, preserved by the Historic Preservation Trust of Berks County. And they also have, um, you got a smartphone with one of those scanners on it. You can scan that code and it'll give you the information on it. So you can pause the video if you want to uh, read this information. So this was also known as the White Horse Tavern also. And it says in here about the meals and the tavern stand. And prices were fixed back in 1700 by provincial law. A meal of pork or beef with small beer was seven pence. I'm not sure what seven pence was. If I find out that information, I'll put it at the bottom. But we'll walk around here and uh, check the house out. All 
looks like this house might actually be used for uh, some office spaces. I don't think they had air conditioning back in the 1700s. I thought I saw a sign saying on the front there it might be uh, offices or something here for the village. Now I was right, apparently the Historic Preservation Trust of Berks County um, occupies the left side here. It's where they have their offices. Now we'll walk up the street here and see if we can get some pictures of the uh, George Douglas house. Here's the back side of uh, George Douglas's house. You really can't get too close to the front of it because they are doing some renovations on it. And this looks like the makings of a serious beehive. Can't tell if those are, uh, I lost it. There it is. Can't tell if those are honeybees or yellow jackets or not. I'll have to wait till I get home and watch the video. But it looks like they're swarming right there. Could be the start of a, start of a massive beehive. All right, so we're gonna venture down the White Horse Trail here, which is a little trail that takes you down to the other parts of the village here from the parking area. See if we can catch any wildlife along the way. And as you exit the White Horse Trail, you come out to these two houses here and I think one of them is a, uh, was the bridge keeper's house or something like that. The person that was responsible for the covered bridge in the area. I'll have to see if I can find a uh, information board here and see which one of these houses it is. Okay, so this house here in front of us is the Michael Fulp house. And you can pause the video and read up on the information about Michael. Just glad that houses like this are being preserved. Show some of the history in the area and the heritage of Berks County. All right, we'll have to walk over and check out this place and see which house this, which house this one is. Now, I found the information placard for this house here, which is called the Mounds Jones House. And according to the picture here, this is the oldest house in Berks County. So Mounds Jones was one of the uh, 17 grantees as to settle on the tracks of the land here. So this was his house, and this is the oldest one in, uh, in Berks County. So this is the information on the covered bridge, and it looks like the covered bridge was dismantled in 1951. It's probably when they built the concrete 
river bridge down here, just down the road here, which is River Bridge Road. There's a picture of the flood from back in 2011 when you had the severe flooding in Berks County. But no sign of the house. I don't think the, uh, the house is here anymore. But we'll walk down here and should be some remains of the bridge in the middle of the river, hopefully. Looks like I picked the right time to come and look for this because right here in the center of the river would be the center support for the for the bridge way over there on the shore you can see the rocks laying there that probably would have been the uh, bridge abutment I can zoom in on that for you so that would have been the abutment over there there's the remains of the the middle support And then where I'm standing right now, though there really isn't, eh, it's a little bit here, some signs with the, with the rocks. But this would have been uh, the other abutment for the bridge. But again, that was dismantled in 1951. So looking at this photo here, this shows the bridge and the Michael Fulp House, which is this house over here. So this whole area right here would have been the ramp leading up to the bridge. Bridge would have been like close to where this sign was, basically. And then the ramp going down ended right over here by the house. So that was a pretty, pretty long bridge. And it was also uh, a toll bridge. And I believe I read somewhere it might have been one of 10 or 11 bridges, covered bridges, that were in Berks County at one time. So this house over here very well could have been the uh, could have been the uh, bridge keeper's house. Okay, so I came back over here to read the to read the board again, and that house, the Michael Fulp house, was known as the bridge keeper's house although there is no official record of it but it was known as the bridge keeper's house and there are i should say there is one geocache in this area which i did find i just happened to pull my phone out and see if there were any here and there was actually one but i'm not going to show you where it is but i found it although it was out in the wide open which i'm surprised somebody didn't steal it and that's uh, one of the things that just gets me with geocaching. People can't put the, the caches back and hide them properly because they're in so much of a rush to get to the next one so they can pad their numbers or whatever, which is one of the reasons why I got discouraged with the, with the game. People just don't, uh, don't use any common sense and just hurry up and sign the log and don't put it back and rush off to the next one just to get their numbers up. All right, so we're going to venture back up the road here and we're going to walk up onto the uh, Schuylkill River Trail, the Thun Trail section, and walk out through and see if we can check out uh, one of the other railroad bridges that's in the area. And then at the side of the house here, there's a uh, trail that leads right up into the woods a short distance and it'll take you up onto the Schuylkill River Trail, which is where we're headed now. All right, so this is part of the Thun Trail section of the Schuylkill River Trail. We came up from the village right about there, and we have signs along the way, but I did check this out earlier over on 724 in Union Township, I think around Shed Road. They're doing construction over there which is uh, they're putting the bridge across for the trail to cross over 724 so you don't have to deal with the busy traffic. The neat part about it is they've exposed the old Pennsylvania Railroad bridge abutments in the process. Had to let some runners and bikers pass me. 
but they are building a bridge there. And like I said, in the process, they've uh, unearthed the, um, the old bridge abutments from the Pennsylvania Railroad when there was an actual railroad bridge that crossed 724 at that location. So hopefully when that construction is done, I'll be able to get over there and film that and show it to you. It's been apparently those bridge abutments have been uh, uh, covered up with ground for many, many years and they've finally been um, exposed when they went to put that bridge in and I guess they're going to leave them exposed and uh, preserve them and everything. So that's a pretty cool thing that they're doing. So we probably got about a quarter mile walk down this uh, down this path here till we find uh, till we get to the bridge that we want to check out. And I just came across uh, came across this sign here talking about the uh, feuding railroads. Talks about the the Reading lines and the uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad and the rise of them. So you can uh, pause the video if you want to read up on that. And somewhere around here too is supposed to be the um, the Schuylkill Navigation or the, the Schuylkill Canal is supposed to be around here somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it is. I think it's actually called the uh, Gerard Branch of the Schuylkill Navigation. So we'll have to see if we can find uh, some remains of it along here. Although now is not the best time to be looking for it because it is everything's just overgrown. And yes, we are right next to the former Reading Line, which is now Norfolk Southern, right next to us. Don't think we're going to be able to catch a train though today. Don't seem like it anyway. We're just walking along here, trying to find some remains of the Pennsylvania Railroad. We've got some right there. There's some old uh, railroad ties laying right there, but. That's about it so far. These lines were removed many, many years ago. I forget the actual year. If I can find out when they were removed, taken out in this area, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. And over there in the distance, I don't know if you can see it that good on the video, but there is an abandoned concrete structure over there. I'm not quite sure what that... Uh, what that would have been used for if it was part something to do with the, the railroad if they had stuff in the area here or what I can't see it that well of course it would be everything would be dead probably be able to see it a little bit better and we made it to our destination this is one of the other uh, bridges crossing over the Schuylkill River. Remember back in uh, early January or February or something like that when I had RJ uh, down below Pottstown. We checked out a bridge down there. This bridge here is similar to that one. It's not as wide but it only needed to support a single track going across. But. We'll see if we can get some good pictures of it here. And here you can see all the, the waste that was washed downstream from flooding and just piled up here at this, uh, at this end of the bridge. But it doesn't look like, oh, uh, there might have been, suggests right there that there could have been a, uh, another bridge here, an iron bridge at one time. And then they redid it and uh, put this concrete one in. Sure looks like there's where there could have been a uh, another bridge next to this. And right there, as a uh, 
one of the joggers here on the trail pointed out to me. I missed them when I was looking there the first time. There's a herring. He's looking for some dinner. So we did see some wildlife and wildlife that I don't like to see. Where'd he go? Crawling right there. It's one of them stupid lantern flies. Maybe it focuses in better, which it probably won't. And yeah, they're in the they're in the adult stage right now. So looking at that, no doubt about it, there was another bridge here at one time. And if I remember correctly, I remember reading something on one of the Facebook groups uh, regarding the Schuylkill Valley Division here of the Pennsylvania Railroad that there was another bridge here. But I forget when it, the one I'm standing on was built and when they tore the old one down. But yeah, there was definitely a uh, another bridge here at one time. All right, so I finally got down to the banks of the river here. And you can see the what the bridge looks like. Similar to the one down in Pottstown, but not quite. And then coming down the path here from the railroad bed, which is right up there, there's this little structure here. I'm not sure if this was something to do with the, the railroad or what. Looks like there's some pipes sticking up there. This might have been something to pump water from the river for something. I don't know. Can't find any markings or dates on it or anything. And the river is low enough here, I can actually get down here and walk out which would normally be underwater but since it's summertime the level's down and you can give you another angle of the bridge you can see all the debris that's piled up there against that the one support from when it floods and whatnot i thought at one time they were going to try and remove that stuff i think they might have because i found a pile of it over there when i came down but it looks like uh, it piled up some more. That's probably why this area too is another reason why this area where I'm standing now, why there isn't water here. And I took a journey underneath the bridge here, to see if I could find a, a date or anything as to when it was constructed, but nothing. But here's the, this is the original abutment. And there's no date on that either, but again, it's made out of that uh, red sandstone that was used a lot. I don't know if you can see them there floating down the river, but there's got some people on some inner tubes there cooling off on a hot August day. Not a bad idea. All right, you can't see it because it's really tough. Hopefully they'll come out, but if you look right about there, there's two huge carp swimming around on the bottom there. 
there you can see him. He is huge. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I didn't get a chance to get the drone up here. There was just too much activity going on here on the trail with joggers and bikers and everything. So it's going to be uh, to come back over here in the in the fall or the winter, put the drone up and get some shots of the bridge. So hopefully you liked the video. If you did like the video, give it the thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And also you can ring the bell down there at the bottom if you want to be notified when I upload new videos to YouTube. So until next time, let's have a ball and do it all. We'll see you soon.